Hello, welcome to a brief training on submitting a monthly activity report in Iowa Grants. Step-by-step -step instructions complete with screenshots can be found on the GTSB website and also in Iowa Grants under program documents. Monthly reports are due by the 15th of the following month indicated on each status report in Iowa Grants. The Iowa Grants system will send you an automated courtesy reminder email 10 days prior to the due date indicating a status report is due soon. The system will email you again three to five days prior to the due date if you've still not submitted the report. The email will come from Iowa Grants. You will need to know your contract type to answer your questions in the monthly report. Your contract type can be found in your contract number. The first two numbers are the contract year. The second grouping of numbers is your contract type. Use the number associated with the directed overtime enforcement category and or educational presentations in paragraph 12.0 of the contract. Keep in mind that there are some agencies that have a dual contract and may have both 402 and 405 D overtime enforcement funds within one contract. Please note a field with a red asterisk is a required field and must contain a response. OK, now to begin log into Iowa grants. Click on my grants and then select the grant for the current fiscal year. Today, our grant is for the Mayberry PD. Next, click on status reports. Monthly reports have been loaded, preloaded for your convenience. Therefore, you simply need to click on the blue font report number in the ID column that matches your reporting period. In this example, we will be using the month of August. Click on monthly activity report in the table. Select the month in which you are reporting on from the monthly activity report drop down menu. Note your contract type and answer the first three questions. Does the contract allow overtime for general enforcement? This would be for a 402 agency. Does the contract allow overtime for impaired driving enforcement? This would be a 405 D. Does the contract allow overtime for education presentations? This could be either a 402 or a 405 D. These questions are conditional based on your response. If you mark no for the required section, the questions below each required question will not appear. If you mark yes for one or all of the questions, Additional questions will appear. For instance, was overtime for general enforcement worked during this month? If no, move on to the next question. If yes, enter the total overtime for general enforcement hours for the month of August. 405 D was overtime for impaired driving enforcement work during this month? If no, move on to the next question. If yes, enter the total overtime for impaired driving enforcement worked during this month. 402 or 405 was overtime for educational presentation work during this month. If no, move on. If yes, enter the total overtime for educational presentations work during the month and then enter the remaining information. The agency group presented two the topic or topics of the presentation, the number of people in attendance, and any applicable comments you would like to add. For our purposes, we are assuming that this is a 402 contract and the agency worked eight hours of overtime for general enforcement in the month of August. The next section is where you will be filling in your contacts per category just like the old activity form. It is important to note, contacts made during GTSB overtime must be recorded separately from your agency contacts. GTSB overtime contacts will get recorded in the left-hand column and your total agency contacts will be recorded in the right-hand column. The order of contact types 
below are not in the same order as the old monthly activity report. So be sure to enter your data into the correct boxes. To begin, click in the first text field. Enter the number of contacts, including a zero if there are no contacts, and then hit tab. Next, enter the number of contacts for your agency, and then hit tab to continue through the impaired driving section. Next, complete the occupant protection section. Move on to speed. And finally, other violations. Next, complete the public information activities. is a required field, so even if zero, you are going to be forced to enter a zero. Next, answer the required question in the Special Traffic Enforcement Projects box. These are the Special Traffic Enforcement Projects required in your contract. If you are a 402, at least two Special Traffic Enforcement Projects are required during the year, one of which is conducted at night and one that is a multi-jurisdictional project. If you are a 405D, at least two nighttime special traffic enforcement projects are required, one of which should be a multi-jurisdictional project. The next question is again conditional based on your response. If you mark no for the required question, the rest of the questions will not appear. If you mark yes, the following questions will pop up. Was a special traffic enforcement project multi-jurisdictional? If yes, complete the date, time, and number of officers, as well as listing other agencies who participated in your project. If the answer is no, complete only the date, time, and number of officers participating. Then enter any comments you want to add in the bottom box. Click on return to top and then you can click save. Next, you will mark as complete. And finally, submit. If you have no further edits to this form, click OK. And once you see the screenshot included that you have successfully submitted your status report, then you know that the program administrator has been notified of your submission. They will review the monthly report. If they have any questions, they will negotiate that report back to you, much in the same way that claims is done. And when the numbers and hours on that report are compared with the overtime spreadsheet and the claim, then that status report will actually be marked approved. If you have any further questions, please contact your program administrator.